What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at. It is the Earth Master here on the live stream on this uh, beautiful Wednesday. April 6th is the date, right? I believe it is. Yep, April 6th, Wednesday, 2022. It's about 11.43 a.m. California time. Latest quake out there on the map. Uh, showing some movement out there in the South America region. Let's go ahead and check out this latest activity here. On the USGS map here, showing some movement out here along the west coast. Also seeing a pretty big push of activity towards the uh, Java Trench area northward into China. Some of this movement from yesterday, but still seeing uh, some moderate quake activity over here around the northern end. Uh, just around the Andaman Sea, of course Java Trench sits here in this region. So a little bit of activity. It looks like a couple... Uh, moderate sized quakes at 5.5 and a 4.5 there uh, in that region over the course of the 24 hour period. Uh, let's see what else we got here working our way eastward just a little bit. Uh, still seeing some movement around the East China Sea, the Taiwan area. Although this activity from earlier this morning, uh, just around the Japan Taiwan region as well into the trench, western side of the, uh, the um, Philippine plate here. A little bit of activity up here around the Japan Trench. Seeing a, uh, a 40 kilometer deep 4.4 right there on the Japan Trench area. Kurokamachaka Trench remains the silent zone for now, but I think that's going to be uh, our next spot here to watch for some possible large scale movement. Uh, down around the Fiji area and the Tonga region, Kerbadek Trench seeing some movement today. Uh, look at this earthquake right here, 548 kilometers deep for that. Uh, 4.3, which struck uh, last night sometime. That's 340 miles below the surface. Since then, we've seen a one 5.5 down south here along the Kermadec Trench, but pretty shallow at about seven miles here, right around the uh, subduction zone at uh, about seven miles for that 5.5 earthquake there, well north of New Zealand, but on the Kermadec Trench. Uh, Hawaii, some activity kicking up here within the last hour, including a uh, 2.3 here, and also some movement over here around the southeast region. Lohi Seamount seems to be calming down a little bit, of course, over the last seven days or so. We've seen a little bit of swarming kick up here in the region of Lohi Seamount. Pretty good cluster of quakes here, about 22 earthquakes with that uh, region of the Seamount. No major changes going on on the Big Island currently. Just a typical day out there in the middle of the Pacific, I suppose. Alaska along the Aleutian Trench. A couple spotty earthquakes throughout the region. No major swarming or uh, activity to report at the moment there. Way up north, 2.3 in the uh, Veneti. Is that right? Veneti, Alaska. I apologize if I slaughtered it. I'm going to attempt to pronounce names I can't pronounce, so we'll see how it goes. West Coast. What do we got going on out here? Of course, this earthquake here on the Gorda Ridges kicked up last night during the update video. Since then, uh, what do we got going on here in this area? A little bit of further microquake activity around the Mendocino and Alder Springs area. That's going to be these earthquakes here um, inland. Just uh, right around the coastal range. Haven't seen any further subsequent activity here around the southern end of the Cascadia. Although still watching that. Uh, trimmer activity last night was still kind of up there. But most of it was up around the Vancouver Island ranges. 264 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia. Uh, southern California, or at least working our way further south. A little bit of movement on the creeping section here of the San Andreas Fault around the, uh, uh, what do we got out there? I know there's, oh, Gilroy, Watsonville area. A little bit of movement kicking up here today, but nothing, uh, no major swarmings to report in the central part of the state. Same goes with the southern part here. Actually, this here looks very quiet. Look at this. Only eight earthquakes on the 24-hour map. Some of this is from yesterday, so it can pretty much, uh, Wow, that's just very quiet here. I'm just kind of uh, wondering what's going on with this lack of movement. Got to watch this area pretty closely. When it goes quiet like that, things could be getting ready to uh, produce a show. There is a 2.1 
Query Blast around the Holtville, California area, right around the Chocolate Mountains, uh, which occurred within the last hour. Uh, Nevada up through Utah, things kind of uh, a little on the mellow side. There's some activity here, but nothing specific. Uh, looks like they're reporting some activity here on the Yellowstone seismographs from, uh, looks like yesterday and a little bit this morning. We have not seen an update. I don't think I checked this this morning. We have not seen any fixing, so to speak, on the technical errors that it's still showing uh, data from the third. So we're looking at a, a few days ago now where they have not re been reporting the recorded data. Last one, like I mentioned here, is from the third. And if we go over here to the uh, University of Utah where they uh, specifically monitor this activity, it's still showing, I believe, the same seismograph stations there from a, from a couple days ago. Go ahead and check this out here. It's a pretty cool site to look at when things are updated. Live seismographs and uh, shows obviously all throughout the Utah region also cover up here into uh, the Yellowstone region here of Wyoming so we'll go ahead and look at uh, some of these graphs here and see what we got still from the third see hopefully you guys can see that let me see here I don't know if uh, let me open this in the new link here or new tab see that activity right there from the third date so they have not even updated uh, their seismograph stations and it's it looks like it's on the um, the side of the USGS right the ones that actually uh, deal with the uh, data and the monitoring so something's going on there um, not for sure if it's being hidden or if they're just working on stuff as far as earthquake activity shown here they are reporting some earthquakes but not showing the uh, recorded data for now uh, Texas throughout the uh, Oklahoma area, not a whole lot going on through this region, although New Madrid zone shown a 2.0 and a 1.8. Pretty deep movement here, 14 miles and 6.8 miles uh, for the depth of those earthquakes. So in terms of kilometers, 23 kilometers here. This is a pretty deep earthquake for this zone, so got to watch out pretty closely. Uh, that fault system is no doubt still alive and kicking, and I've uh, been building up a little bit of stress since the uh, early 1800s. Uh, around the Caribbean, uh, things kind of calming down around Puerto Rico, St. John region, and and uh, yeah, we got we got one earthquake down here around the Venezuela area, near the coast, around the port of Spain, 4.9 that kicked up. Looks like uh, late late last night in that area of the world, and some further activity around the El Salvador region with a 4.5, about the same as well late last night. Uh, for that earthquake south america is seen on the globe some movement kicking up here into the area i'm going to bring up the emsc model see what we got for the uh further movement here in the region not showing anything above that but we got to go down for a little bit here and a closer model to see the threes and twos kicking up here on the emsc chart there's some uh definite movement here into the middle part of the peru chile trench Although nothing specific, nothing major, just a typical day along that major plate boundary. Uh, trimmer map real quick. Like I said, uh, there was about 264 epicenters of trimmer. Um, volcanic seismicity, I like to check occasionally some of these volcanoes uh, into the Pacific Northwest since, uh, um, since there's definitely been some activity here. Uh, not, not specifically at Mount Baker. I haven't really checked Mount Baker in quite a while. Uh, these guys are showing, uh, it's hard to say exactly what these are. These are kind of look like earthquakes, right? But they also could be, uh, it's kind of odd. Is it pointing directly at this one? Or is this just a glitch? It's kind of hard to tell. This thing's pretty well squashed out. Let's go back to previous day and see what we got. Sometimes it's really hard to tell in terms of earthquake activity when they have the charts like this. This here, I don't believe is, uh, I don't know, it's just really hard to tell when it's, uh, the lines are so thin, right? You can't really decipher earthquake activity from like possible technical adjustments 
there's a Vancouver 2.7 up here. It's kind of what it would look like as far as a distant quake goes, but localized earthquake activity does tend to look like this. But then again, it could be some type of uh, interference. And it's really hard to tell uh, when there's only like one seismograph station throughout the region. Uh, let's see if we can... I don't think we can even switch the channels up here. I think that's uh, all we got in terms of being able to monitor the activity here at Mount Baker. Look at that, only one seismograph station up here. There's one outside of here. Uh, it's, uh, it looks like a six component broadband station. If there is some activity that's on the larger size, it would be picking up here as well. But 2.9, look at that, I can barely see it. Let me check the previous day. Maybe? Is there a previous day? Okay, there we go. Forgot to click it. Yeah, see this side's still getting some type of issues going on. I don't believe that uh, earthquake activity, but uh, I will look into that a little bit more later and see what they are reporting. Uh, other seismograph stations around the region. Uh, we can check out Mount Hood uh, in the area of the uh, Oregon region. This station here, I mean, this uh, volcano has quite a bit of uh, monitoring programs with it. Top of Palmer Lift. See, now these are the graphs I kind of like to look at. Uh, when it comes to uh, seeing the squiggly lines kind of means that it's adjusted accordingly and and how it should be i know there's some uh some big wind events and some storms not storms but uh, low pressure system coming in to the pacific northwest and of course at this elevation the winds and stuff get stronger so i think that's kind of what we're seeing here in the area maybe some small microquakes here around mountain hood very small ones uh, but this blob of interference looks like some type of weather event a um, couple earthquakes here as well. These are kind of well defined, but it doesn't look specifically at the seismograph station. There's a little broadness to it, indicating that these could be, uh, well, rather deep or a little distance away from uh, this specific seismograph station. But no major swarms going on at the volcanoes that I can see from the ones that we looked at. Uh, what else? Did we cover everything out here, folks? Um. Ch -ch -ch -ch. um yeah, just kind of a kind of keep an eye on the west coast here with this kind of eerie quiet down there in the southern part of the state. I just uh, it's been a while since I've seen it this quiet down here along this plate boundary, uh, the Pacific North American plate boundary. And of course, these plates or these uh, fault systems, the Elsinore Fault and the San Jacinto Fault Zone, um, normally are pretty active on any given day, and right now they're hardly showing anything. Uh, being reported at all. Uh, solar weather. Let's go ahead and run past that real quick and see what we got. Uh, things are already cooking out here in California. It's supposed to be 92 degrees. Uh, 97 tomorrow. We could could hit 100 possibly on Thursday or Friday. And this here is in Northern California. This is not Death Valley or or somewhere down south in the southern part of the state. We're up here in Northern uh, California, just outside of Chico. They got some dry, hot north winds, right? You think north winds, any other part of the country, nice and cool, right? Not here in the valley. We get these downslope winds off the mountains, and they heat things up. Very hot. Too hot for this time of year. Okay, uh, looking at the geomagnetic forecast here, called for a G1-class storm, but so far, things are not looking likely. Uh, maybe a little late, or may have missed us completely again, but... Uh, I don't see any major events happening there on the KP index. Uh, and far as the solar data itself comes, all pretty minimal. I haven't seen any spike or any indicative um, brunt of a CME. No brush with a CME either. So maybe running a little, little late, a little behind. Because uh, these guys are still calling for G1 class storm. We'll see if that hits. Solar flaring activity in the green for the moment. Not a whole lot of chances of uh, any significant solar flare or even minor ones at that. Massive sunspot 2978 and 2981 looking pretty big, but 
not complex and not uh, any fighting grounds there between the uh, magnetic fields. Things kind of look pretty calm uh, for the most part on the sun. There's that giant sunspot. You can have a massive sunspot here, but there's no complex uh, uh, mixing between the magnetic fields. There's no arcing and sparking, so to speak, when it comes to producing a massive solar flare. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe out there. It is pretty windy out here. The stream so far has been holding up pretty, uh, pretty nicely. Sometimes you get a uh, dry north wind and it creates a lot of static in the lines out here and uh, could cause some connectivity issues here with the internet. But so far we're fingers crossed and uh, knock on some wood. Everything will be uh, running as planned. All right, guys, peace out. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy your afternoon. We'll chat you guys a little bit later tonight.